and welcome back to your region of 120. I'm Jeff Clint, and this is a series of videos of things that I think that you should know. And today we're going to be talking about a word, a concept, something that could even be an ideological fallacy if you really spin it the right way, uh, the concept of equivocation. Uh, so there are words with multiple meanings. Uh, an example of some such a word is the word equivocal. possibly equivocal, one of the two. Uh, and so this has two definitions. One, allowing the possibility of several def or different meanings for a word. Or two, of doubtful character or of being a, a suspicious character. And so uh, an equivocation is the, quote, illegitimate switching of the meaning of a term during an argument or during some attempt at reasoning. And so you will do this by using a equivocal uh, word uh, twice in the same argument, and each time using different meanings, or possibly once, but using a, the meaning that uh, you would expect, or not using the meaning that you would expect, and using a, a meaning that you would not expect in a kind of underhanded way. And some of the meanings are close together. Uh, or dependent purely on their target. Uh, like, for example, we described in the previous video on touch. So I can touch a piece of paper, uh, or I can touch a piece of paper. Uh, only in the first case there was uh, a pen being used to do so with. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a, a, a word with different kinds of meaning depending how you do it. Uh, whereas there are other words, such as beat uh, or man, uh, which have vastly different meanings uh, depending on the context. You can listen to a beat, uh, or you can, you know, get beat, as in beat up. Uh, and if you were to try to describe the concept of listening to a beat uh, to someone, and they had the concept in their head of, you know, somebody being beaten, uh, you would have a very confusing result. And so if you intended to do that, uh, and intended to make that confusion, uh, so perhaps in a situation discussing beating people up, uh, bringing up the, the term beat uh, as listening to the beat. Unless you were careful about it, you would actually intentionally cause this. So it's as, as other videos in this series, uh, this concept is related to other things we've talked about, uh, specifically the four-term fallacy. Uh, and as we kind of discussed in the, that video, uh, most of the examples we even had were by using equivocation. And so you can create four terms very easily by taking three terms and then kind of using one of the words twice uh, with two different meanings. Uh, and if, if you look at the argument, it doesn't look like uh, you've actually committed this particular uh, error uh, because you look at it and it reads correct. It reads as if you've made a valid argument, even though you have not. It's related to the argument from emotion because oftentimes when this is involved, uh, one of the meanings has a, a high salience or a high uh, kind of uh, association or a strong attachment in your mind uh, between an emotional experience or a really emotionally charged uh, view of things and certain definitions and then the, the other definitions were, which would be actually appropriate for the argument itself. Uh, and so if you can kind of trigger those emotions to, to kind of force your brain to firing those neurons, to making that kind of association happen, even at a subconscious level, uh, you can sometimes get away with convincing people of your conclusion, uh, even though it is not valid. Uh, old and simple words that have tons of meaning, uh, or, or have many different kinds of meanings, uh, can be especially bad for this. Uh, as used in the previous video on the four-term fallacy, nothing is such a, a word, because you can have a lot of different senses in which something can be nothing, or in which nothing can be present, uh, so, for example, quote, margarine is better than nothing, uh, nothing is better than butter, therefore margarine is better than butter. Well, the, the two, I mean, that was another four-term fallacy example, but uh, the, the two cases of the word nothing in that example uh, are, are kind of different things, and, and they're only similar uh, enough that if you're reading it and not really paying attention, you'll, you'll kind of assume that you're, the argument is valid. You can actually uh, 
if you have no other way of doing so, uh, judge someone's kind of general character or judge an argument's general character on whether or not it uses equivocation as kind of a functional part of it, uh, as, as whether or not that equivocation happens and is not caught. Uh, it's the kind of mistake that sometimes people make anyway, and so in a long enough piece of written work, you'll probably encounter it. Uh, but certainly uh, some people in some works and some uh, places that you might get information use this more than others. And those, you can start to suspect their ability to reason in other ways, because this is kind of a, a mistake that you'll find if you're not paying enough attention or if you're specifically trying to mislead someone, uh, etc. And although it's not the only means that you could judge an argument or judge a person or judge you know, a source of information, because you know, after all, they may have good information on them in, re you know, in other areas, uh, this is certainly one of the, the things you could use to do so in the absence of better. Uh, so as an example of this, uh, you'll find people who are uh, kind of opposed to major findings in science. So for example, quote, the uh, theory of relativity is immoral because it promotes moral relativism, unquote. This e equivocates between two different meanings of the word relative. Uh, and so yes, it is true that there's a theory that describes how physical or objects move around uh, depending on their you know, mass and energy uh, that is describes our, our world very well. Uh, and no, if you try to use that to promote moral relativism, you will fail. Uh, so, and the reason is that those two meanings of the word are different. Uh, it's been pointed out that uh, it's easy to commit this if you're not paying attention and are constricted to, say, a small amount of characters or a small amount of words. Uh, so, if you're using Twitter or if you're responsible for writing headlines for a newspaper or something like that, uh, sometimes you have to really pay attention so that you don't do this. Uh, and then, of course, on the flip side, some newspapers and Twitter uh, people uh, do this on purpose because it's funny. So, quote, the White House, or White House mom on destroyed CIA tapes, unquote. This, of course, has two different definitions of the word mom, because on the first, uh, it would mean, uh, you know, they're, they're not saying anything, or they're keeping their mouth shut, or they're, you know, quote, just shutting up, unquote. Uh, and not saying anything about whether or not they destroyed some tapes. Uh, and then, of course, the other meaning of the word mom is mother. So the White House mother, maybe the mother of the First Lady or something like that, on the destroyed CIA tapes. So you would read that expecting to hear an interpretation of you know, some CIA-related uh, kerfuffle uh, from the perspective of some mother involved with the White House. Of course, that's probably not what you're going to get, uh, but it would be funny to read such a thing. Uh, the Onion uh, sometimes pulls these out on purpose, too. It's kind of funny. Um, the best example in history uh, that I'm aware of is probably the uh, Abbott and Costello Who's on First skit, uh, which goes something along, uh, along the lines of, quote, uh, I say, who's on first, what's on second, and I don't know who's on third. Are you the manager? Yes. And you're going to be the coach, too? Yes. And you don't know the fellow's names? Well, I should. Well, then, who's on first? Yes, and so on and so forth. Uh, all, of course, blurring the you know, use of the word who, uh, I don't know, and what. Uh, and with the two main characters uh, each having a different definition and trying to talk to each other as though they understood the other. Uh, of course, that is hilarious to listen to. I encourage you to go find this on YouTube and watch it. Um, but it's, it's just an example of how, even if you're well-intended, uh, and if you know that this exists, you can still fall into it. Because between two people, two people may have different definitions, and it may not seem obvious that two different definitions of the word are actually in play. Uh, and so you have to be careful when talking to other people, not just making arguments yourself, that this isn't happening. Uh, there is an another example uh, is of the word humanity. Uh, and so this is going to mean, on one case, kind of as part of being human. And on the other case, as uh, part of being human in the sense that uh, it is an intrinsic uh, right to, you know, that you have. So, you know, you have a right to your humanity because you're a human being, etc. So, quote, the humanity of the patient's appendix is medically undeniable. 
Therefore, the appendix has a right to life and should not be surgically removed, unquote. Uh, of course, again, th this is a, a kind of blurring of the, the term humanity, uh, or, or because th there are these two different definitions being used. Of course, if you're dying because your appendix has burst, uh, even though the appendix is, is still alive and is undeniably human, uh, you can point to it and it will only occur inside a human uh, or, or you know, dating from being inside of a human at some point, uh, it is of course something that you would want to cut uh, and does not deserve a right to life uh, very much. And so there, and, and we could go on and on and list many, many of these. Uh, but the, the important thing to know is that this is a, something that we have to watch for and it's dangerous because if you read the argument or the word or the conversation and you, you might accidentally not pick up that it's happening at all. It, it's syntactically correct. Uh, it's, it's only dependent on the person who's understanding it to kind of make heads or tails of whether or not this is actually happening. And so there's, it, it, it's a much more difficult thing to catch in practice. And it's easy, especially if you're tired or not paying attention, to just blindly accept uh, what's being argued. And so uh, if you can keep from making it, keep from, or really point it out when it does happen, it can be a useful thing. Uh, one of the, the sources for this video, uh, and I'll include a link at the bottom, um, from, uh, I thought I wrote down its name, but it looks like it didn't. Uh, oh, uh, Lazy Perfectionist One uh, says that, or suggests that different languages equivocate in different ways. And from my understanding of uh, French and Spanish, this seems to be true. Uh, and so it should be that if you equivocate in English and translate to one of these other languages, the translation process should go horribly wrong. And especially if you translate back, uh, as long as you can keep a argument together, uh, it should be more clear uh, in the other language that you're actually equivocating. And likewise, if you're doing a lot of translation work, uh, you could theoretically uh, translate to an argument wrong by causing this uh, if you're not careful. So for all you translators out there, make sure you're on the watch for this. Uh, but, but again, it, it's, it's something that maybe there's a way out of this. If you can train yourself in enough languages, or if you can expose the argument itself to people who have been trained with enough languages, and kind of treat language as a tool of getting out of this problem. Uh, another point uh, made by Lazy Perfectionist One is that, at least according to him, English is particularly bad for e equivocation in general. Uh, and this is probably also true of other languages that have been used as trade languages and lingua franca, uh, or, or the thing that connects a whole bunch of different cultural groups with other languages. Uh, English has inherited a lot of baggage from uh, you know, Germanic, from Norse, from French, from Latin, from you know, all over the places as time goes by, and so we have all these words that have these highly, highly overloaded meanings. So, quote, in what other language does a nose run, or, you know, do we have, a, you know, a foot that can smell, unquote. You know, that, that's a reasonable point. You know, just the way that English is built may make it susceptible to this. Uh, and so it's something, especially for English speakers like people understanding this video uh, to keep on a watch for it. Uh, the kind of last example might, that might be worth bringing up is the if by whiskey, uh, which might be a logical fallacy on its own, uh, but the if by whiskey argument goes something along the lines of, well, if by whiskey you mean uh, this uh, delicious substance that uh, can cause us to have this pleasant experience uh, and, you know, for gentlemen to to socialize together, then of course I support whiskey. And if by whiskey you mean the you know devilish uh, fire water that uh, causes you to you know get drunk and commit all sorts of stupid activity, then of course I don't support whiskey. Uh, unquote. Of course, you know you have to support whiskey one way or the other. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, what the, the consequences are as far as whether you support it or not, uh, or at least it shouldn't. Uh, you, you shouldn't have two opinions like that on the same subject. Uh, or at least not in a kind of um, symmetrical way, uh, at least at that level. But it's, it's related to this in that there are these two different definitions of the word and you can't hold both of them. You have to pick one, sorry. Uh, and so 
hopefully th this makes sense. And are there any questions from the audience today? Not so much. Not so much? Awesome. Well, if there are any questions anywhere where this video is posted, feel free to ask them. And as usual, there should be a uh, little donation Bitcoin address if you want to donate so we can buy some more whiteboard markers, because our last one is dying. Uh, and uh, as usual, hopefully you'll uh, watch the next video. See you then.